The battle for LA, albeit minus LeBron James, saw the Clippers take care of business to secure Hollywood for the time being. Seven clips amazingly scoring at least nine revealed another layer to both their overall assemblage and top players' repertoire, as most shockingly Tuesday night saw Kawhi Leonard record merely the second triple-double of his storied 12-year career. The face, or should I say fun guy of the franchise, clutched up to either dime drop or bucket get on nine of the Clippers' last 12 points, a final 6 minutes 17 seconds of the game where he in that span alone recorded all of a game-altering steal, three rebounds, three assists, and four points, as the Terminators passing out of aggressive traps and hard stunts offensively to keep the defense off balance, plus haul down board getting beastliness on the glass, took over when it mattered most. The Beard's 23 and 10 dime clinic featured El Chapo carrying the scoring load early on, and like I mentioned in two days ago's Clipper video, you can't forget James is a three-time scoring champion and three-time assist champion. What we didn't talk about enough in that video, though, is that Harden being a second, third, or even fourth scoring option at any given time is indisputably unstoppable. If this Clipper team's health, chemistry, and team-wide decision-making on and off the court stays at 100%, we are looking at a squad for opposing coaching staffs that is a bona fide nightmare to game plan for in order to take down four times out of seven. Stay tuned for an optimistic yet strongly proven with facts take on why the Clippers should be given another shot at being considered top contenders in 2024. Right quick, only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Links down below in the description for those two platforms, but back to the vid. Kawhi's gravity drawing along with reading and reacting to a double at all cost based defensive game plan in the clip's most recent game against the Lake Show was influential, but in the starting five around him, you can't forget about the beard going off for 20 opening half points, PG and Man combining to shoot 15 for 22, along with off the bench Powell, Russ, and Coffee combining for a pivotal 42, which were key complements to the Claw's 25 point triple double. Stepping up as the X Factor was Amir Coffey, who for Tuesday night's game as a whole made all three of his triples in what was a punctual 24 minutes of PT, as the product of Minnesota was a crunch time option for Ty Lu and would earn his keep by draining a double digit lead extending catch and shoot deep range bomb to put the game out of reach in the final stages. Since being undrafted in 2019, then signed by Clipper president Lawrence Frank as a free agent, Coffey's been a steady locker room presence, a solid form of internal competition, and had his moments of being very productive, like when he made 37 plus percent of his three-point shots in both the 2021 and 21-22 campaigns, earning him a three-year $11 million extension. However, when the Clippers got a bit healthier last year, Amir fell out of the rotation and has still been working his way back into it midway through 23-24. Speaking about being in and out of the lineup, Coffey pinpointed a mentality allowing him to stay even keel whether his number's called or not, an aura that I think has signified the basis behind Amir being able to stick around for five years with one team in the NBA, making him the longest tenured Clipper outside of starters Kawhi, Paul, and Avica. How do you maintain your confidence when you get out of the lineup? Control what you can control. Steady working out whether I'm playing or not. And that confidence is just going to come from reps. So whether I'm playing or not, I'm just going to continue to work. My time will come when it is. When he does get minutes, it helps Coffee to have the all-time triple-doubles leader next to him off the bench. The speed, athleticism, and shot-creating one-two punch of Russ and Powell off the pine gives you electrically enterprising reinforcements, as well as fast-paced attack-heavy lineups. Most popular play that'll come from the most recent Battle of LA was Westbrook's all-time shoe moment, losing one of his kicks, attempting and failing to put it back on, but still draining the triple, and it was shocking to see him still be able to knock that down. For what's the insane to say, 7th man Norman Powell, he's attempting an average of 4.5 deep range bombs per night and making what's an NBA 6th best 45.3% of them, given Norm's a beast at getting downhill off the dribble as a quick twitch slasher, that aforementioned deep range efficiency forces the defense to have to pick their poison to either make him a shooter or a slasher, problematic given how operative Storm and Norman is at both letting it fly from distance and attacking. For me personally, Powell's always going to be known as the man my rap stole from Milwaukee in 2015's draft in exchange for Grievous Vasquez, Masai's prime was special. 
a primary contributor fueling the LA Clippers to the NBA's fifth best offensive rating, and as noted in my last LAC upload, the best winning percentage across the association since all the way back in mid-November, is the fact that five of their best players in Kawhi, PG, Harden, Powell, along with currently injured center Zubots, are all having career seasons. Each of those five are posting top campaigns of their career in effective field goal percentage, so while you may be concerned that Los Angeles does own just the 14th best defensive rating, they're offensively statistically proven to be peaking assortment of top weapons, especially in the age of bucket getting, makes the Clippers an authentic threat to fly its franchise's first championship banner in 2024. Why you should take the Clippers more seriously in terms of top contenders is coming up, but quickly in terms of the most recent W, for six Clippers to score at least 17 is astonishing because LAC is known for being top heavy with their big four of Kwai, Paul, James, and Russ. Yet Tuesday night's matchup with the Lakers showed you on top of that their depth, with the likes of Terrence Mann and Norman Powell coming through with big time scoring performances. And if Mann and Powell, potentially even Coffee, can produce nights like they just did once the postseason hits, their production's gonna help win the Clippers must win games which would be a luxury. The last contender standing in any given year should be credited, so injuries are never a substantial excuse, but at full strength, let's take an optimistic yet fact-rooted stance when it comes to the Paul George and Kawhi Leonard era. Aside from the 2020 Bubble Conference semifinals, where with coach Doc Rivers they choked a 3-1 series lead, Kawhi's ACL tear in 2021's conference semis kept him out through the entire 21-22 campaign, where the Clips would miss the postseason. In 2023's playoffs, where they went down in 5 to the Suns, Paul George was out with a right knee sprain for the entire series, while Kawhi tore his right meniscus and missed games 3-5. through five. It was only this past October where the Claude deemed himself as fully recovered from the ACL surgery he had two and a half years ago. Don't get me wrong, I'm well aware Leonard and George as a duo have lost trust from a big portion of the basketball universe with their performances in the 2020 NBA bubble during that first year under now newest Milwaukee Bucks head coach and Doc Rivers, who is infamously the only coach ever to have choked three different 3-1 series leads while also having choked five different 3-2 series leads under 2016's championship winning head coach in Tyron Jamar Liu, the Clips have yet to be given a fair shake at full strength other than in the 2020 bubble. So with that, why or why not do you watch them right now trust the Clippers? Let me know for a chance in next video shout out and also to compete for free merch of your choosing with five winners being set by June 21st in Community Speaks. Today's Community Speaks shout out goes to Tim Edits, who says, I think the 2024 season will be different for the Celtics because of Chris Dapps Porzingis being a monster two-way player, Drew being a great defender to get back the loss from Smart, and the jump from the bald Mamba to an elite defender. Great take right there from Tim, well put. Get your takes in to compete in Community Speaks and score big. D-Flow signing off.